another question was, I'm hearing George Floyd died years ago and the Obama administration have posted him on their website eight days before he died. Um, I wouldn't doubt it being that everything they do is pre-planned. So if they had the CARE Act a year and a half before Trump got in, got in office, you know what I'm saying? They, they was already plotting to do all this stuff. So that's part of the problem. The problem is that there's more than enough evidence to show and prove that basically everything that's been happening has been orchestrated. So if it's been orchestrated, then that means nothing that happened was by chance or by reality. So therefore, everything is scripted, and that means everybody down with the script is liable. You know what I'm saying? Yes, um, they posted that on the other day. Um, because Morocco, see, Morocco don't like to really get into the Morrison Temple because the Morrison Temple Morocco had deep relations between uh, the founding of the temple in 1913 and the reorganization of the temple by 1938. You had straight Moorish princes and stuff coming over here, staying at the temple, you know what I'm saying, and doing all that type of shit. This is before the country of Morocco existed. Remember that. Morocco didn't exist until 1955. So anybody coming to hear Morocco in the 19, early 1920s and stuff like that, they were basically coming to the empire. They were coming back home here. We were co-signing them. So uh, somebody showed on TV how they had a whole thing on the Moors uh, with the situation happening with the George Floyd thing. But it ain't like they don't know. Like I've, I've shown letters and stuff from the Moroccan government acknowledging the Moors Science Temple of America and the Moors and things like that. It's just that these modern day Moors, these modern day Arabs and these people be on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? So they be downplaying Yeah, definitely. If you can send a link, everybody can then get it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, well, you know, they, they say one thing and then do the next. Like when we was doing the truth be told, all of that, everybody was like, yo, she always cutting you off. You got to let him speak. You can't do this, do that, like being extra hard with it, right? But then, boom, we stopped doing it. Then a little while ago, I posted something that uh, she had did with her products and shit. And then it was like, oh, you guys should be doing stuff together more. It's really good you give her, you share your platform. It's like, but... When we was doing it openly together, it was, it was like y'all was having a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, you know what I'm saying? Then then they flip it. So it's like people are fickle regardless, man. No matter what you do, somebody going to have a problem with something, man. Because it's not always about you. It's about where they be at at the time, uh, astrological shit. A lot of all of that stuff takes into a play. But in the moment, you don't care about none of that. I'm saying. Thank you. And there's a thing in this movement when it comes to females, man. It's like in the old school systems, there's two, there's two kind of situations. There's the pride and there's the clan. We more we're more of a clanish society. But clans revolve around a woman. You know what I'm saying? So the woman who is supposed to be the, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, head of the clan, she's really not the head. What she is is the one or is representative of the one that produces the air. So as that, the culture, the men around her create a system that is there to support her. See what I'm saying? That's a clan. A pride is the reverse, where the man, again, is the dominant and the, the everything revolves around him. So now when we look into old school, those people who are into Egypt, the hieroglyphs and stuff like that. When you read and get into that old school stuff, you start reading it, you start to see that Jeb, who is the earth god, was a male, right? But then Newt, who is the sky goddess, was the female. 
You see what I'm saying? So at some point they flipped that, in which man took the el- took the took the realm of the sky to be above the creatrix. You see what I'm saying? And then created a society that would be indicative to that, in which now the the we move from like you say a, a matriarchal thing to a patriarchal situation, in which now she is there to help support him. You see what I mean? So. The Romans were a patriarchal situation. You see what I'm saying? That was a patriarchal society. Because all the chief deities started with who? Who was the chief deity of of Olympus? There you go. But what was Zeus's real name? What was the name? What was the, the true name of Zeus? Um, no, because Kronos was one of the sons of Zeus. Kronos was the Titan. Zeus was the son of Kronos in the story. Nope. Nope. Zeus's real ancient name was Ethops. <laughs> Zeus's original name is Ethops. In the stars, the constellation of what they'll call Zeus has two different constellations. There's the constellation of Zeus, that's the fake one, and then they got the real one, which is what they call King Cephas. Right? King Cephas was called what? The Ethio, the great Ethiopian king. So the pedagogy, as they created this new, uh, let's say, patriarchal-based system, Mm -hmm. basically had to create Mm -hmm. the means by which the woman would no longer be, well, we would no longer be under the jurisdiction, basically, of the womb. Understand? (laughs) Where the womb was basically the highest aspect of law and creation. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sis. I'm sorry. Um... That was the highest form of creation at that point. And everything was judged basically on that when you dealt with clannish lines. But then when the prides began to manifest, you see what I'm saying? We get a shift in going from man being earthbound to now man being skybound and the woman being earthbound. You understand? That's where we went from Newt or Newt being the sky goddess. And then they, they moved that down. We moved away from Newt and um jeb right which is the cosmic aspect and then we move that and further down into a more corporeal aspect in the form of a and a set you understand in which now osa is the one who is the pre-god to the goddess who now impregnates her right but then through the ritual he gets murdered and now she's forced to raise the son alone. But it wasn't until she used her magic to resuscitate him, make him rise again to get her pregnant, to have Heru to then go and uh, and uh, uh, destroy his uncle, who was set in the story. You understand? So what you had right there was the was the total switch of millennia's millennia's worth of information. Now switched up into now a new form of investiture. You understand? Well, I'm saying that the physical aspect of the woman, right? The physical aspect of the woman, it gives her dominion over the earth because she is symbolic of that, right? But what I'm saying is that the original designation that they had the earth guard in was a male version, which is why he, Adam, was given dominion over the earth, right? In the, in the story. Right. And so, and so when the males, right, who were trying to now create a different type of system and a different type of mind state in the ancient peoples that were there at the time, they wanted to establish the ascendancy of the male. Right. So the male now becomes the all father of the sky. You see what I'm saying? 
And now the female becomes the earthbound who now produces the children. You understand? So what we're talking about is going from, let's say, an anode to a cathode situation, from an analog to a digital situation in ancient times now, is what I'm talking about. Because these al al uh, allegorical images and processes are all activated chemicals that come online when you understand the true representation of what the symbols mean. It's the difference between looking at a periodic table from the perspective of somebody that's not really interested in science and then those people who can look at a periodic table and really break down exactly what they see. You understand? Like it looked different to a chemist than to a, a uh, accountant. You understand? So only when you have the eyes to look for it and see what it is that you're looking for will you see exactly what's happening with this thing. You know, so I don't know if it was so much about putting the woman under. I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think that that was the case because the woman was still a primary piece in it. It's not like it was all kings and no queens like that's not what was going on. But it was just more men more had decisions in the inception, meaning that they was making more decisions on their own. More so than going and consulting an oracle or going and consulting a, 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 a great mother or something like that. You understand? So in, in essence, there was also a good element in it that forced men to become more self-reliant. You understand? So we're talking about really how the ancient world was remodeled as to why we're in the quagmire we're in right now. So I just wanted to bring that to the attention because most of us are still looking at things from the perspective of, okay, was this a matriarchy or patriarchy? When, even though the more Moorish clan system was a, in a sense, a matriarchy base, they still was ran by a sultan. You understand? Still was ran by sheiks and stuff like that. You know? And sultanas and stuff like that. So there wasn't a you the woman get behind me thing. That stuff didn't start to happen until the organized religion, specifically the Roman side, started to uh, start to prey upon the energy of the woman to try to covet it and use it as a means of energy for themselves. Yeah, that's a great one to get. Another book you should get is Voodoo, The Quantum Leap. Get that if you can. A good companion to that. Yes. So, like I said, in that, the Moorish thing, the Moorish Empire, you know what I'm saying, was always a consistent thing based upon our revering of the original principles because we're the ones that's carrying the stuff in from the past into the future. You know what I mean? So in that, when we look at what's happening today, we're just basically bombarded by a bunch of false, really just false information, perpetual false information. Yes, or what they call the high priest of Anu, right? Who are the Moors? Um, hang on one second, guys. Um, okay, let me get this on. So, anybody have any questions? Or Officially, this image. Okay. Uh, they are, but it's more like like protesting and stuff like that. Like they haven't gone heavy in the hood yet. Um, the way that I've seen them go in other cities. So so far so good, I guess. So they haven't gone totally in yet. 
the way that they went in on everybody else. Uh, I think, well, if you're going to defund them, what I think is supposed to happen is they're supposed to do a national referendum on police brutality as a uh, epidemic. The same way they did, thank you. Same way that they did um, the virus thing. And then from there, you do a vote of no confidence. The Department of Justice does a vote of no confidence on the actual national police structure. So this way they got to to redo the whole thing from the top down. That's supposed to happen first. But I don't think that happens. So defunding the police, that's cool, but what if a private company comes in and starts funding them? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they have to, because at this stage, the corruption, is, it should happen in every police um, force in the in the country. You understand as grimy and thing as Switzerland and the police and these people are that Switzerland has never, they've never shot any of their own citizens, the police out there. <laughs> like never, they've never shot anybody. That's crazy. And this is a whole country full of white people. So that should tell you something. Other countries as well, they don't have the type of situation with police brutality that we have here because police here are an extension of the invasion, the invading forces that usurp the original government. You understand? Know like when we look at all those movies, the Wild Wild West, the reason why they like the Wild Wild West and the people so much is because those people, specifically the Wild Wild West people and them niggas, they was all contracted by the United States government to come and rob our banks and our stuff like that. Them banks they was robbing in them TV shows and stuff was all black bank. Those was all Moorish. White folk ain't had no bank. You know, the Muscogees had bank, the Cherokees had banks, everybody had banks. Told you, the Tisologies in what they call Black Wall Street, all them niggas was oil barons. They had oil. <laughs> so all of these oils that Rockefeller and these people got into and all of that, when they exported it to the Arabs outside, they were using the model for the malls that already had shit here. We were never not, we were never broke. We never not had our own. Our own was stripped and taken from us by the same people that's acting like they here to help us today. You know what I'm saying? But because black folk have no nationality, their movements can be hijacked by whoever comes into them, by whoever's around at the moment. You understand? They don't have no direct police force. It's not like if this, if we all, it was like if we was all in fences and turbans and this black man just came walk came up talking about black power, he wouldn't be able to do that. He would be shut down from the gate. You know what I'm saying? Because we would see him coming. He don't look like us. He's not from us. So he could be an enemy. You know what I'm saying? But black people have opened themselves up to be openly possessed by whoever will give them love. They've turned a black man into that girlfriend or that boyfriend that you really done with them and they just keep calling you back, just keep calling you, keep wanting to be in your life and stuff. <laughs> That's what they turn black people into, man. A stalker. We, we, we're we stalking our, <laughs> our place in, the, in this country. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, niggas like Akon is doing songs with Takashi. And nobody checking that, nobody checking that. But I told niggas Akon was an agent for the Chinese from the beginning. <laughs> know what I'm saying? They co-op everything, everything that y'all make. Look what they did to rap. <laughs> they slowed raps down so much that they really acting like Eminem is the best rapper in the world. Why? Because most of these other niggas is mumbling. <laughs> They're not even talking. They don't even talk. That was all within 10 years. That was all within eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That was all within the, the, the eight years of Obama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is what's going on. So 
What I wanted to get into is the fact that, one, we have the proof now. This is proof. Remember, I told y'all, there's a direct connection between the police, the banks, and the credit union and Wall Street, right? I told y'all that. Well, the other day, Standard & Poor, remember I told you a couple of years ago, Standard & Poor downgraded the United States credit, credit score to a 2.5, which is hella low. No country's ever come back from that. Now, I told you, there's a municipal overwrite in every city budget that has established that when the police station is established, they automatically go to whatever banks, member banks that's in the area, and they create insurance bonds for the police based upon per capita how many people they estimate the police will kill per year. And then the insurance, right, that goes to it or whatever, goes to indemnify these cops, which goes around they oath. But the thing is, they don't report this to the IRS. So that's what makes all of this fraud. None of this is reported to the IRS. That's why they have to list you as black, Negro, colored when they arrest you, because that would allow them to exacerbate the 14th Amendment, because that's the only way they can deal with melanated people is through the 14th Amendment. So what they've averaged is that after every killing of a black man, the Dow Jones goes up at least 1 to 10 to 15 percent. So that means that there is a deep financial incentive for the police to murder black so-called people, melanated people, minorities, poor people, women, children, babies. This is fact now. This is not conjecture. You know these 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 um pundits on the YouTube that don't have no substance. All they do is regurgitate Celestine prophecy and Eckhart Tolle and 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 Oprah quotes and Forty Eight Laws of Power. Them type of people. Them people who are not substance based stay away from information like this because this information is actually what will allow us to get our just due because this proves Rico. If you can prove that a criminal organization exists within a specific state where multiple entities are receiving multiple money from, from things like fraud, coercion, blackmail, murder, you can bring them up on charges for RICO. That's what they shut the mob down with, right? And tax evasion because they don't report these deaths in the, in the upswing of the surplus that comes from that to the IRS. So it's compound fraud. You know what I'm saying? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? <laughs> we have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt now that not only is there collusion, there is deep, deep money being passed to and fro between the state and that, and this proves that there is an incentive in each police precinct, in each um, uh, region where there are police and all of that. They are the ones functioning from that position. Everybody following. Because this is not conjecture. This is fact. This can't be a theory if it's real. And these crackers posted it. This is what I mean about them telling on themselves now. Then when they posted this, they took it down right away and apologized for showing because now this is it. You understand? This is the game changer. This is what can allow us, if we was to take this all the way to the DOJ, 
and force them to do an act of no confidence on police nationally because they're all a part of the KKK and the descendants of the paperclip babies that came over here. All the baby boomers, the baby boomers are the paperclip generation. That's them. <laughs> That's them. You understand what I'm telling y'all? So everything else everybody else is talking about is bullshit. Because what this also says is that this all came into effect with what? The Act of Congress of 1871 by who? The so-called United States, right? But remember, America already existed. So that was illegal because they didn't get the permission from the original Congress to do it, did they? No, they didn't. Therefore, everything is moot. It's all fake. There's no statute of limitation on fraud, man. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't do that. Therefore, when you have this situation now, not only can we tie in the Klan to the creation of the United States, the illegal act of Congress of 1871, not only can we take tie this back to the illegal Louisiana Purchase, how is it that these niggas is moving all of this government stuff and never got the permission of any Congress to do it? Think about that. Think about it. They are only there to imitate and emulate you, Moors. They they don't even have their own book. They call their book the Chloron. Like, come on. They don't have nothing. They've never had nothing. Yeah, now H you talking about HR 192 where it talked about the bankruptcy with trafficant. That was about the bankruptcy of the United States. United States is different than America, man. We're Americans, bro. We existed before the preset. We go back to the original republic in 322 BC, man. That's our American heritage. The, redistribute, the, the redistribution of the wealth that comes with everybody else that became American after they changed the definition, that was only after the 1800s. That was after Reconstruction. Think about it. All of that shit happened after Reconstruction. So prior to that, everything was what it was. So what we think the Civil War was, what we think the Battle of the War of 1812 was what we thought the, uh, what else happened during that time? All of that stuff that happened with that, none of that stuff happened like that. That's why the white man is always reenacting the Battle of Gettysburg. You understand? Remember, the Quran says remembrance of Allah is worth more than prayer. So people who live their prayer to Allah is always praying with every breath. The people who don't remember are the ones who, sub who submit themselves to the religion, you see, to the, to the physically, to the strictly physical practice of it, right? So in that, these guys, again, have been following the Moors from the beginning. So when they say that they're the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, Ku Klux Klan is really a, a acronym for a, a Paleo-American deity. Okay, I'll show you him. Okay, let me show you. So when these so when these do when these clan niggas do come up, you can let them know, like, dude, you don't your, your whole thing is not even based on white people. <laughs> the clan don't even come for white people, come from Mexico. <laughs> Watch this barmy dude.
Your child, even when you have a child, even when you have a child, your child don't do everything and you teach them and all of that. They don't do everything on their own, even when they're adults. Do they? No, they have help. They have somebody to teach them how to do it, right? So the prophet said he's going to keep the European around long enough to teach you how to run a government, right? That's what he said, right? Right. So let's start breaking the myths and stop demystifying the KKK because it's really not, they really not that deep. And they really ain't been putting in the work that you think they've been putting out. Now, I'm not saying they haven't been killing this stuff, but they, are, again, were just another extension of the police. You understand? When the lynch mob will come to lynch the, the black man, the sheriff would have to give him up, right? Right? So the KKK established itself under the Union Society of States. This is where the CMA come in, read your clock of destiny. And they became part of the Magna Carta Code, which means that they merged themselves back with the Vatican through the Roman Jesuit orders which is the Knights of Columbus, who gave the charter and the Cloran to the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Islam? So we just, de de this is why the original KKK uniforms had a crescent and a star on it, remember? Remember? Okay, this is the, the this is, this is the original KKK. This is who KKK was. Ready? Ready? This is him. This is, let me type it in so you see. Cool. Cool. Who? Khan. Excuse me. Cool. See that? Capital K U L K U K A N. Kul Kukan. This is the deity that the Jesuits. When they came in with DeSoto and the rest of them people, whatever, this is the one that they chose to, to start really rocking with because this was the closest version to the devil that we could have because in our society, there is there was no devil. You understand? Didn't I show you that the uniforms that the KKK wear come from the, the, the order, the Negro order of the Knights of Seville? that initially was made up of Moors who had decided to stay and was acting like they was Christians, but to hide their, their true intent, they would wear the dunce cap or whatever and turned it into a habit. Remember? Read J.A. Rod. Thank you, more. Read the J.A. Rod's book, Sex and Race. Make it knows no color line from Superman to man. Show you the whole thing. Every society, like in like in in Cinco de Mayo and all that, that's all about the Moors shutting down the Europeans and all of that. That's why they paint their faces black, the same way they do in Spain. Yes, it's back with mockery, but it's also ritual. They said, "Well, we got to keep doing this so they don't actually come back collectively and really do it." <laughs> so we put them under the jurisdiction of the Kufu Khan who was the ancient deity of what? Let's, let's get into him. Let me see how close and how real this is. Okay. Let's, let's look in. Right. Kuku Khan, the plumed serpent. The Feathered Serpent, the name of the Mesoamerican serpent deity prior to the Spanish conquest of the Yucatan, Kulkukan was worshipped by the Yucatec Mayan Moorish people in the Yucatan Peninsula, of what is now Mexico. Now, when they say worship, what you got to remember is 
you can't take the European version of what ancient Mexico was like because first they populated, they only go in towards the end and they only was really trying to focus on the districts of the Meso, uh, of the so-called Siberians that was able to stay and eventually became Indians. See what I'm saying? They only going from that period. Not Quetzalcoatl. See what I'm saying? A little different. Kukan, the feather serpent. This is also the 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 flag of Mexico with the eagle grabbing the snake. That was the ancient flag symbol of the Tumuancan people, the Tomo Ancan people, what they call the Tumacan people or the Temistan people, i.e., the Moors. But he was two deities. You had Kukulkan, and then you had Quetzalcoatl. The same way you had Asaw, and then you had who? Excuse me, the same way you had Heru, and then you had who? Who was the rival? Set. Thank you. See? Same story, same people, just over here. So the, the cult of Kukulkan was the first one that rose past the old classical period from from uh the linguistic and the so-called ethnic divisions that was happening at the time right uh the cult facilitated communication and peaceful trade amongst the people right for many different social and ethnic backgrounds also the cult was originally centered in the ancient city of chichen itza right which is the modern day mexican state of the yucatan right right where the damn they said that the devil was grafted, right? When you read this again, the, the clock of destiny, right? So Kukul Khan, the KKK, right? This was the main deity. Now his rival or his alternate face again was Quetzalcoatl, who they would call also called the trickster, right? Who is set? So we're still dealing with ancient so-called Moorish or, or Moorish Mesoamerican science, you know what I'm saying? It's just that they have adopted it and co-opted it through the Freemasonry, so we don't recognize it when we see it, right? So with the present police situation that's happening, that gets us into this. But Sequato Kukulkan was also a god of numbers. Right? He was the god of trade. Right? They said that the ancient uh, Mayak would have manifests, like you have a manifest to to say, okay, this 20 pounds of rice or this, this, that, or whatever. Um, on the manifest, they would have an image of, of KKK on it to help preserve the trade. No matter what they was trading in, whether it was people, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Rice, grain, you see what I'm saying? So what better deity for them to consolidate their base through but through that? Because this to them, they basically co-opted it like everything else and turned it into a, into the darker aspect of it by focusing on the Quetzalcoatl, the, the other side of Kukulkan. Right? Because this whole system was taught to them through the Jesuits, because they were the ones that were under the jurisdiction of the Moorish Empire when they came and taught the other so-called Europeans or whatever what was going on in the name of eventually taking over the economy. In ancient Mexico, they, there, was no, there was no such thing as famine. They had gardens that would just float in the sea. And if you got hungry, you could just walk down the road. Like you walk down the street, you get hungry, instead of going to the store, you just go by the creek, and there would be a whole uh, garden just floating in the water. You could either swim to it, go to it, get your food or whatever, go home. All you had to do was whatever you took, you'd have to either leave seeds or plant seeds. That whole concept, again, got translated and passed all the way back down now, up, I should say to us, again, via the Kituwa Society or what was the Kituwa Society in how they would handle their harvests, right? 
So, the, so this now brings us to reparations and why they don't want to give it to you because if they give you the reparations, they're going to have to be giving you the same money that's coming from the same RICO scheme I just told you that's been going on for the past 249 years. You understand? Okay. So look, they go to spreadsheet. I think I'm playing. Um, where is? Give me one second, guys. That's the problem. So the way to keep this thing going is to divide the man and the woman from the child. That's why when you go to family court and places like that, because you're under the 13th Amendment, the child has a lawyer, the mother has a lawyer, the father has a lawyer. You see what I'm saying? That is a violation of the of the Constitution, which says that each person has the right to be secure in their home. Your home is your family. So that, again, yes, thank you, more Article 4. So there again, this is all proving how they keep going into this RICO situation. Right. By excluding us from it. So look. Police brutality bonds in 12 cities and counties. Look, Bethlehem, PA, right? That's Petzl, that's um thing. Because this Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, that's that's the real Bethlehem. <laughs> Not the thing over there. The thing over there is named after this one. This is ancient Bethlehem over here. Look, 739 million. Canton, Ohio, 1.8 million. Chicago, 7. 109.3 million. This is what they bonded and everything. Why do you think so many black people are showing up dead out there? Because that shows, that gives Wall Street confidence that the white supremacist model is still in effect, which then gives the international investors that are investing in the white supremacist murder of original people and then the distribution of their bodies and souls and whatever else, then get to add more investments into it. Understand? Yes, because these are also the areas that they want to perpetually redevelop and move those people out because they have to constantly move the bond because somebody is always buying the bonds of those people in those areas. So they have to naturally get the people to be in the areas where the bond is held. So if we know that this whole community's bonds is being bought up because they all being targeted and, and marketed and, and rioted and stuff by the police, then that means that we projected we're going to make this much back and we're going to have to pay this much out. So that means we have to get this much back from the state. See what I'm saying? That then gets that money from where? From Wall Street. How does the state get the numbers? How does the state get paid out of the, the, the situation? Well, How did they do that? Right? Well, how did they find out? Well, how did they get paid out of it, I should say? Do this.
How do they get paid out? They get paid out through this. See? So when they talk about the system or the prison, the school to prison pipeline, right? The system, right? This is it. This is how it works. This is why your birth certificate is so important to them. And the social security number is so important to them because that's your listing in the, in the fraud as the asset that they've charged all the liability for. Look, go to the state of Alabama. But look, the state of Alabama is actually incorporated in Alaska. Alaska is incorporated in Arizona. Arizona is incorporated in Arkansas. Arkansas is incorporated in California. You see how it works? I'm showing you. See? Or what that say? City, 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 city of, right? City. That's not the, the, the state. That's not the, the people. Do you understand what I'm what I just showed you? You see? Every every place is incorporated in another state. So when you start going at one dude and one officer, you gotta understand that bond, if it's in Chicago, right, that you're going for for that seven hundred and nine point seven hundred and nine point three million, you gotta go, you can't do it in Chicago. You gotta Put Chicago on notice and then take it to see how they freak it. Look, state of Illinois, city of Chicago. You see what I'm telling you? This is inherently evil. This is how they were able to maintain the control. Right? New York joint is in is, is in North Carolina. <laughs> wildin, wildin. Look, Rhode Island is in is in South Carolina. <laughs> they go to Dunn's number four arm. Um, United Nations and all of that. So you're not even dealing with countries. So when these people talk about the United States of America as a country, what are they talking about? This is a get rich quick scheme for the castrato mamelukes and disgruntled blacks <clears throat> and everybody else that came over here and took over our country and turned it into a business for the other country. So this, again, and then they're not reporting half of this to the IRS. This is why you have the right to take control of the entity and turn it into a trust. When you authenticate the certificate, I don't know what these people are talking about, but what you're authenticating is the notary signature. It has nothing to do with even a certificate because the notary represents the officer of the state that the bond that this certificate is attached to and that is endorsed then by the so-called Federal Reserve that up until recently was connected to the IMF and that went all the way back to the United Nations. So when the states needed to get their bonds fulfilled for all of the murders that they commit against the black males and black females and black children, they are also still heirs on the private side. So on the public side, they tax them out and lowball them, but then they are acting as these people's beneficiaries on the private because the people's families don't even know that this exists. How is that a conspiracy if I'm showing you that this is exactly how it works? I'm not making this up. I didn't make these numbers up. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what they do. This is how they make their money. Look, what is, what is, Hard evidence of the corporate takeover. This is what it is. 
what it is. They bug it. Dun and Bradstreet codes are assigned to corporations in America. You see that? Not in the United States. That's doing business in America. We're the Americans. So they're doing business on our lands to track our credit ratings because based on our collective credit as the original inhabitants, their rating is at the top because they've assumed us as wards and minors. So they have to do business on our behalf on both the public and the private side. Below, you will find the DUNS numbers for the aggregate U.S. government and each of its major agencies. Those aggregate governments are each U.S. state of each U.S. state, along with that of its largest city, and those are aggregate United Nations and some of its agencies. These corporate code numbers can be verified by using the following link. Here go the link. Look for yourself. Checking the code numbers for the governments, you will find that they have many subsidiaries and shall have corporations that lessen financial accountability. You see? So when people get shot by the police and all of that, you got to in start involving the United Nations. You got to list them in the suits now because you have implicit evidence that they are the ones paying the bonds for all of these murders. <laughs> Islam? This is why you establish an assumed name or a fictitious name of both the old name on the certificate and the new corrected name with that while the authorized representative is then the, the um, holder who is grammatically correct in his, in his or her proper person. <clears throat> because you as the principal have to repair the injury that was done to the estate to the trust, to the U.S. citizen that now has to be disregarded as such, and now to them it has to become a disregarded entity. you got to fire them for gross negligence and being belligerent trustees, because that's what they are. They are profiting on your debt and charging you tax on it. What that got to do with being black other than the fact that when you're melanated and you're born here, that certificate has been tied to the, in, to the ancient trust that goes all the way back to the original American Republic that was founded by Hano Bay in 322 BC at Casa Kamakumit Bay, what they now call Massachusetts Bay, with the Bornstone that is a legal landmark, according to Deuteronomy, that says should never be run. So because the Bible was accepted as public law by the same United States government, they are violating not only the statute and, and whatever law, they are violating the same biblical law that they have now put themselves under. Look how many, look, exactly, look, look how many outs we got. Look how many ways we got them. But no, these more want to talk about whether or not you were Indian or whether or not you're from Africa, <laughs> whether or not black people, black people kill more black people, kill each other more than anybody else, and kill white people more, all this, all this trivial nonsense, all orchestrated by the same people I'm telling you about. Keep you from just talking about stuff like this. This is what I'm talking about, the money. <laughs> Is everybody clear on this? So that means every time the police stop you and every time they do that, they're forcing you to do business and hoping to get into a situation where they get to bother you so that way they can get money. Because this is where, this is what pays for the police pension. That's why they make it seem like killing cops is the worst thing in the world. There's nothing worse than that because they are the ones that's out here killing. They turned it into what it always was. A bureau of interlopers and foreigners who have turned the country into a battleground and keep it unstable. Because it was never about 
the white man in the proverbial sense. It was about those of the so-called original families of Europa that came over here because they felt they was oppressed. Because they felt they was oppressed. And so they put themselves, uh, they were oppressed because they were practicing that draconian magic that put them into the experiments and stuff like that to continue the, the whole, what we would call the Yakub situation which is really just a, a, a way of talking about a long-term generational millennial-wide breeding program. You know what I'm saying? And where did they say that that happened at? In the Yucatan, right? <laughs> right? How many more as you know had, you, had Yucatans when they came out? <laughs> Real talk. Remember where everybody was in Escalades and Yukons and Yucatans, remember them? It's all that's based on us. It's all us. They keep selling us back to us, and we don't even see it. Jeep, the Jeeps were Indian. That was another name for Cherokee. That's why the Cherokee created the Jeep. <laughs> they used to call them Jeeps. Real talk. The Mazda. Mazda is named after Ahura Mazda, which was the Persian god. You understand? Sonata was an ancient Moorish deity, an ancient black god, like Sambo. So we were not at war with, there was no civil war. That's fate. That's the reconstructed version of what happened. What happened was, it was an upheaval during the War of 1812. And they used that time to create a bunch of battles, which is a bunch of things that they said happened that really didn't happen, but committed it to paper like they did. Then created training academies and saying that this is what they was doing and trained imported white slaves to start to uphold that. <clears throat> and then eventually got enough of them together to push them out. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, but the Civil War was really what you call the Indian War. The Indian Wars was us fighting amongst ourselves. That's really what was going on. And then these, and then we started using, parts of us started using the interloping slaves from our European cousins in battles and start using them to help fight these battles and then to give them land in exchange if they won. And pretty soon these dudes then set up towns and stuff that used to be in the places that was there from the towns or whatever was doing and paid tribute to those same so-called Moors up until the point that they decided to consolidate themselves as a government because they got tired of serving us and being slaves to us. So the War of 1812 was basically like a civil war amongst the Moors themselves, which was really just the culmination now of the skirmishes of the American Revolution that had started from 1511 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Started by Frederick Douglass's great great Muslim grandfather named Mohammed bin Said. Then Mark Vesey was a Moor. Nat Turner was a Moor. Read the stories about Rat Turner. He said that he always wore a turban. You know what I'm saying? Bookman was a Moor. Toussaint was a Moor. These people were Moors. You know what I'm saying? When they they wrote in their book that anybody that was Moors, whether they was the king or God or anything, would be listed as slaves because they were giving us the designation that they had and teaching that to their people who were just coming out the caves and just learning how to read and were willing to fight because they didn't want to go back to the caves or wherever they were imported from. They were the ones picking the cotton and all of that. 
the sharecropping and all that stuff didn't start with black people to the end because we were oil barons way up until the 1920s. Fact. Fact. All of those cities you see in the exposition that they give up to Tartary and all of that, that was all the cities we built. That's why they destroyed them. Because the white people that they brought there to see them for the first time had never been nowhere. So whatever they told them white people it was, that's what it was. And then they sought to turn the whole world into a representation of the what they saw at these World Fair expositions. And this happened coincidentally at the same time they were colonizing the world. Think about that. At the same time they're colonizing the world, they're having world fairs during what we call Reconstruction to tell the world, the new world, with these new freed white people, what the world, old world used to be. All at the same time. So Indian country, well, all the countries that were mentioned and spoken about in connection to the annexation of Texas in the congressional record in 1845. Read them congressional records. They talk about the Moors and how much land they had and Granada and all of that. These records go back over millennia, but they keep those records sealed up and hid. Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, what you call Tulsa, was thriving into the damn 50s before the white people took hold of the government there, totally. But we go by what we see on TV. At the time Abraham Lincoln was alive, he's a melanated being. He was a, a black so-called man because his father was black. You know what I'm saying? But when I say black, I'm talking about melanin, cosmic melanin, dark energy, dark matter, whatever, whatever, not the status. That's why he could go to court and get them all off when they tried to redesignate him as a Negro because that's what they was doing. So the only way out for all of us was for him to set off the war against Rome. Dungy, thank you. What did it say? These people be bugging. Like when you when you say the Republic of America, you talk about the real republic. You're not talking about this thing they set up in 1700. What? It was here with government way before that. We was getting read, read Periplus. He talks about meeting the gorilla men <laughs> and killing them. Read it. The, the gorilla men they found here. He was getting rid of. I'm gonna show you pictures of them in a second. Let's see. February 11th. I see very plainly Abraham Lincoln's dark brown face with deep cut eyes. With deep cut with, excuse me, I very plainly, I see very plainly Abraham Lincoln's deep brown face with deep cut lines. The eyes also to me with the deep latent sadness and the expression we have got, we have got so that we exchange bold and, every, and very cordial ones. This is a description of him from life. Get the book Hidden Lincoln and it tells you all about him. His father, Doug Mead, the one they show Abraham Africanus, the other one, it's like black and white. In my research, that's Doug Mead. That's his pops. Here we go. So I'm going to show you from his own mouth who he was at war with and why there's no... He, what they talking about with the Civil War, with, this, with all of this other stuff, I don't know. All that stuff we've seen in Glory with the actors. <laughs> That's when you found out about the Civil War. <laughs> Real talk. They talk to you about that in school. You ain't pay attention to that. But when you seen Denzel and Morgan Freeman in the movie, it made sense, right? And they got really rewarded for that too, huh? But now, once did you see anybody in that movie coming on a boat from nowhere? <laughs> did you?
What's the BK? What do you mean BK? Oh, here you go. This is from a book for Abraham Africanus the first, the secret mesmeric history of Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Yes, the fall of America. Oh, the book was Periplus. Yeah, by Hanno Bay. Just from his own mouth. No one will deny and dispute the power of the Almighty to make such a communication if he pleases. But admitting for the sake of, of a case that something has been revealed to a certain person and not revealed to any other person, it is revelation to that person only. When he tells it to a second person and a second to a third and a third to a fourth and so on, it ceases to be a revelation to all those persons. Okay, but you see, keep using persons. To all those persons, it is revelation to the first person only and hearsay to every other. And consequently, they are not obliged to believe it. That comes from Thomas Paine. So that is in reference to the establishment of the Jesuit world, uh, New Roman, Nova Roma system that they instituted. And remember historically, Rome itself was founded by the <laughs> Okay, this is from Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, stated, as long as God gives me the heart to feel, a brain to think, and a hand to execute my will, I will devote it against the power which has attempted to use the machinery, to use machinery of the courts, see, to destroy the rights and the character of the American citizen, that's us. But there is a thing which is very certain. It is that if the American people could learn what I know of the fierce hatred and of the generality of the priests of Rome against our institutions, our schools, our most sacred rights, and our so dearly bought liberties, right? They will drive them away tomorrow from amongst us, from among us. Uh, they would drive them away tomorrow from among, the, from among us or would shoot them as traitors. The history of the last thousand years tells us wherever the Church of Rome is not a dag wherever the, wherever the Church of Rome is not a dagger to pierce the bosom of a free nation. She is the stone to her neck and the ball of her feet to paralyze her and prevent her advance in the ways of civilization, science, intelligence, happiness, and liberty. I do not pretend to be a prophet, but though not a prophet, I see very, a very dark cloud on our horizon. And that dark cloud is coming from Rome. It is filled with the tears of blood. It will rise and increase till its flanks and will be torn by the flash of lightning, followed by a fearful peal, fearful peal of thunder. Then the cyclone, such as the world has never seen. The cyclone is the cyclops. That's the grand dragons, the, the white people, the, the Illuminati, and all of that. The cyclone, which the world has never seen. See, the eye will pass over this country, spreading ruin and desolation from the north to the south. After it is over, there will be long days of peace and prosperity for, for popery with his Jesuits and merciless inquisition, right? Why would he be talking about the inquisition if he wasn't connected to the Moors? Think about that. We'll have been forever swept away from our country. Neither I nor you, but our children will see, will see those things. The beloved Lincoln made this statement at the conclusion of the trial of the former Catholic priest, Mr. Quinky, author of the book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome. This is what's been going on. 
this is why they're trying to flip out their little fake Annie Price and then do their little song and dance with this new dude, acting like they're getting rid of the queen by defrocking her, defrocking Charles, putting them into the run. While all of this was going on, Hillary Clinton was now went to trial and blew trial. Now she got to actually testify on, on the 33,000 emails that she purposely deleted. You know what you know what she's gonna do? She's gonna throw your boy Barry Satoro on the bus because he next on the chopping block because all of this virus and all this stuff started from these people. But what I've been telling y'all from the door is that all of these people started together. So we're gonna go through this before we close this out. This is not conspiracy if we actually have the actual evidence to show what we're talking about. Okay. So this whole thing is about to be exposed and be blown up in actual law when they start indicting Bill Gates and all of that because the International Criminal Court of Justice just indicted him and his bitch wife and the rest of these devils uh, that's attached to this COVID thing because they still trying to flip their little uh, thing. So anybody that's in Arizona, is in Colorado, that need to go out against the, the bill they're trying to pass over there to, to make it where they got to give you their version of whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? You got to go against that. Get All right. Okay. Now, first and foremost, all of these things are Freemasons, period. Therefore, anybody that is a Freemason, right, that is active in practicing the European rights, Right? You're down with these people. And even if you're not, it's still part of your thing. If they give you the right sign and all of that, according to your obligation and how you've been uh, doctored and now then you're gonna have to look out for them. You know what I'm saying? Same way cops do for each other. That's why there's no such thing as a good cop, because they the good ones cover for the bad ones. So again, what we're about to see is fat. So we see that and we have understood that our our people from the beginning have been at war with Rome, going all the way back to the founding of our Republic, right? Which was Carthage, which was against Rome, right? <laughs> right? So our enemy has always been clear. So when the Pope systematically, religiously took over all the religions of the world, this past, right before this past Easter, and they handed it over to their new Antichrist. That means everybody that's now openly, when they open this place back up and go in there, you are under the spiritual, you're agreeing to be under the spiritual jurisdiction of this person. Your God is them now. The real church is the church that exists outside of the jurisdiction of Rome. In all churches, if they have a 501c3, if they have whatever, I just showed you that they are all contributing to the murder and ritual killing of black people going all the way back to the beginning of colonialism. You understand? Okay, so here we go. This is George Scherf. George Scherf is George Bush. This is him in his Hitler uniform, his Hitler youth uniform. Here's his mother, Mother Scherf, and here's his brother, Martin Beerman, uh, excuse me, and here's uh, Martin Berman. This is Reinhard Gellin. Reinhard Gellin worked with, was right under Hitler. It was Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels, Gellin, Bormann, and uh, the other one. Mengele. This is Joseph Mengele, the founder of the MK Ultra by Patrol Satanic Ritualistic Program. This is Otto Skorzny. Otto Skorzny was uh, Hitler's bodyguard. So this right here is the going away party for George Scherf and them right before he came to America and adopted the name Bush. Everybody got it? Right? According to Otto Skorzny, this is from the book called The Bush Connection. According to Otto Skorzny, the picture of the Scherf family with a few friends, uh, Mother Scherf's hand and left is Martin Borman, boom, 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 at the center right, Bush. Scorsley and George Bush were instrumental in merging the Nazi SS intelligence with the OSI to form the CIA, period. With Wild Bill Donovan Allen Dulles, who was a twin, right? He had a twin brother, and this is where Dulles Airport come from. These guys were also part of CIA mind control experiments, MK Ultra, which was all SS programmed. 
So I'm pro I'm showing and proving to you. Remember, his his American fake Nazi father, Prescott Bush, is not his blood father. His blood father is Mr. Scherf. Because this guy, Bush, is Jewish. Because there was over 150,000 Jewish people in Hitler's SS in the Wuppertal. So I'm showing proof of you. Not only was he a Nazi, but he was actually a Jewish Nazi who was also a satanic uh, demon. Now, this is the people. When they came to America, set all that up, he was then hooked up by people like Ted Turner, who was another paperclip baby, Bill Gates Sr., right? George Soros, right? David Rockefeller, Barbara Walters, David McCullough, Brooke Astor. Remember I told you they killed the Astors and bleached the family. Uh, they merged them with the Vanderbilt. The Vanderbilt took over the Astors. The Astors were black. The original Astors were black. This Astor is the one that helped turn into Vanderbilt, in which Gloria created Anderson Cooper and his brother, who they sacrificed. Uh, Leonore Annenberg and Irene Diamond. These are the Grand Dames. Right? This is George Soros. Now, peep this. Uh, these are the people who established all of the medical contingents because remember, Mengele was a surgeon. It was Mengele who taught Fauci and his. Uh, uh, Mengele's doctrine is where they created the modern American association. That's all based on them. Okay? So again, you said follow the money. They, the paperclip generation, what we call the baby boomer generation, was the product of the Cold War generation, which created all the mind control Manchurian candidates that they put into the world, and they created the perpetual intelligence civilization, a, a secret world within a world. The intelligence agencies that have do what they call advertisement. So when you look at the movie, the TV show Mad Men, all those guys were CIA, <laughs> fronting as advertising specialists, because the advertising firms is what were dictated through the yellow journalism through people like Barbara Walters, Walter Cronkite, right? All these people. The question is, who's this black chick? See how they don't put her name? <laughs> who's this black man? See how I don't put his name? Because they down with it. This is what I'm saying. Excuse me. This is actually Richard Parsons, who was the descendant from Astor. You see what I'm saying? Remember I told you Jacob Astor and was Moors. So you see? They killed Jacob Astor, Strauss, and the other guy, I keep forgetting his name, with the sinking in the Titanic, because they was against the League of Nations, which, which eventually established the United Nations, which then established all of the subdivisions that were absorbed into all of the nations that became a part of the United Nations, and then all of those states and states of became a part of the United Nations under this trust set up by these Nazis. You understand? And now this is all coming out. Everyone that they put in front of us has been one of these people involved. Look, they go Hitler and Otto Skorzeny at the McDonald Lodge, like McDonald's, the, the, the corporation, at the McDonald Lodge in 97. probably dead now but his daughter is is Angela Markle Angela Markle's niece was a chick named Stanley Boylan Stanley Boylan's changed her name to Stanley Dunham and that's Obama's um mother his father's Frank Marshall Davis the black dude Obama was just a dude that they brought their ritual with to bring the African connection in because they got to remember they got to make you believe that you come from Africa Here go Bill Gates with Epstein. Epstein, again, 
is in the at the center of all of it because he was the Mossad agent chose to create the honey pots to ensnare all of these people involved in the cabal. So all of these people are the Freemasons that pay that pay for the basic Negro on the street that you see in the Black Lives Matter situation while and out. This is where this money is coming from. That's why they always have a Mason involved in this killing or something like that. Like, why are we not going into the Brianna? How come the revolution didn't start when Brianna Taylor got hit? She was actually pregnant with a baby. You know why? Because these are Masons and they are still trying to pump the, the spiritual patriarchal right, I told you, of the man being the most important. When the man is the manifestation, again, of the pride, whereas the that's the spiritual, but the physical manifestation of that is the woman. So they pop off the, the whole rebellion with the death of a Freemason and then put him in a gold casket that's paid for by another guy named Floyd, always continuing the Minneapolis, meaning twin, meaning Gemini. This is Gemini season, ritual going. This guy's a paid crisis actor who's on Cash Cab. You can see him on TV right now. Just look it up. This ain't even the same dude. But this is obvious to the people now, so this is great. You know what I'm saying? This is Otto Skorzeny later in life, from when he was a thing and thing. Because there was three, it was two, or two, it was three Hitlers. It was the Asiatic one, it was the one that was the Aryan one they was using, and then it was the, the dummy that they just killed in the bunker. It's all a heavy Freemasonic ritual that's that involves the the fraternal order of police. It's simple. It's not even that deep. <laughs> and everybody in the world has been hoaxed in it, and everybody is acting like it's cool. Again, here go George Bush when he was in the Hitler Youth with the Hitler Youth uniform. I got pictures of Salasi at Rothschild House with Rothschild riding horses. <laughs> Remember, Rome was founded by Ethiopians. And they established the first library university out there in response to try to break Carthage's irrigation that it had on education. And then when they wound up having to pull out, the women were left. The Romulus and Remus, who grew up under this new Make internal struggle situation took those Sabine women and raped them and used them to create the first stock of so called Roman legions. This is fact, look it up. That's why Mussolini at the end of World War II felt like he could invade Ethiopia because that was the birthplace of Rome. Is that? That's why the Eastern Ethiopians that took over and when they when when the Aksumites that came from India took over from the original Liabellans, they moved the capital and then established the Coptic situation to continue with the line of the, the Sabians, the Shebans. See? There they go. Because he because his money long, man. <laughs> This money long, man. Look how long it took them to, to take down people like R. Kelly and all that. Look how long it took them to get Epstein. Your money long like that, and you were part of the situation, and you helped breed people for these people and all of that. This is what they do. This is the original Hebrew. This is what. And these, again, these so-called Hebrews they're showing here, these are actually Carthaginian, Phoenician. You understand? It's, it's, it's the original people. Because the Hebrews adopted the Canaanite culture. Remember that. And the Canaanites, when that all merged together in the state called the Kart Hadid, and the Kart Hadid became known to them as to us today as the Carthaginians. Who then consolidated themselves later as the ancient Moroccan or Moabite nations. Anybody have any questions?
No, he's not dead. He's just as dead as Weinstein. Weinstein dead. Them niggas is out telling. They just telling. They just sitting somewhere just telling when they and every and people just wind up missing. Where Tom Hanks at? They go to book. Y'all can get the book. Where Idris Elba at? Where, where all of these people that was talking about the virus? Where they at? I was done. So you can go on Facebook, send these people messages. You can get a job faking, faking revolutions and faking um, getting shot by police and all of that. This is a job. You can actually, they actually get paid for this. There's people who are part of this that get paid and just get circulated in different jobs and do this all year. You understand? It's all fake. It's not like one part of this real. It's all, all of it. It's all fake. But what's real is the fact that they told on themselves with the with the uh, Nasdaq thing with the black people. Because now that's it's a wrap. Because what that means is that this system, this is the same system that was operated through the Nazi core. You understand? So this also proves the the correlation. Freemasons, the people that's doing this out there, they're not even police. That's why it's open season on them. Because the ones that's doing the crime, the police that's running in the houses and, and, and stealing clothes and all of that, it's not even really police. Does this look like a police logo to you? This is some old school crash, TNT, Red Dog. And they used to have the police gang units because they were gangs. Look at, the, look at the Negro, look at the slaves behind them, ready to serve them, ready to kill their own people. I don't have no real jurisdiction like that. I'm showing you they don't. They bonds is not even real. All they bonds is coming from fraud. From the top going all the way up to the UN. We just trace where all the money is going, how they doing. Look, here go Reinhard Gellin. After when he was supposed to be had dead. Supposed to been dead for years. This is him. <laughs> In 2003. And then he took, say, then he takes a, a Polish Jewish name. You know how many J Poles he allegedly killed? They all here. Everybody that you like is descended from one of these Nazis. Trust. Everybody you like is descended from them, black or white. They all descend from these guys. That's why they put them in your face. Nobody is in this thing. That's just based on their talent. Talent has nothing to do with it. You could be the most talented person. It don't matter. It's all fake. Now they're trying to run the next fake on you with the, the new Halit Sarver. This, 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 this thing. The Moors don't already got at him, though. He ain't responding back to that. How you the new sovereign and new head of the whole thing and you claiming the line from the descent when the original people you claim from look like this. <laughs> what you talking about? He's trying to run another game and whatever. And Trump, he got to do what he got to do because that's like his cousin. <laughs> that's his straight cousin. His name Christ, just like Trump named Christ. He's the same. He's, he's blood people. He got to hold his man down. I'm just saying that it's all fraud. Okay. Anybody have any questions real quick? Um, they're going to try to push the, um, COVID thing a little more, trying to get some sort of vaccine, but Trump did an open thing. Trump did an open delegation and declaration saying it's, it's not going to be mandatory though. It can only be, he's not going to prove it if it's mandatory. So whatever they're going to do, what I noticed about him, also happy birthday to him, man. <laughs> Real talk. Because everybody liked the nigga when he wasn't when he was president. 
when he wasn't president. Now he's president, everybody hating on him. He ain't my president, so I don't care. <laughs> but whatever he do to preserve and put these suckheads where they need to go, I'm with. So for whatever reason, he holding his cousin down with this whole transfer of power with the queen and all that. But all of them need to be hung, need to be brought out. So until this is all brought up to the real forefront, forefront, it's whatever. But he's the first president to ever go on talking about how he's at war with the deep state. These are evil people. And they have a tendency to rob and kill children like this thing is going in. So whatever. I don't, I don't, he's not my president. So I'm not emotionally involved in what he do like that. All I care about is what he do to preserve the original republic. And we say, Moors, when we say the American Republic, remember what you're talking about. You're not talking about 17th century. You're talking about 300, you're talking about almost 35,000 years. That's what you're talking about. You're talking about at the same time Buddha was out here. Actually, you're talking about before that. You're talking about before Buddha came out and, and came out against slavery. Because Buddha... Siddhartha Gautama, peace to the Moor, he came out with the first one in history to, to talk and try to give some reprieve to these slaves. <laughs> you know what I mean? To these white people and stuff. So you gotta give him some respect for that. But based on his connection, based on his connection and based on a misunderstanding about that with the Buddhists that came maybe two, 25,000 years later, According to the plus lessons in, in uh, Nation God the Earth, they came and tried to go into Mecca over there. And said that Buddha had given them the right, but they had got turned away and forbidden for Buddhists to ever go back. So I don't know when the last time you've seen a Buddhist in Mecca, but it don't matter who they're now because all of that's going to be under the jaw when they open it back up. The kingdom of God lies within, so saith the Lord. So you got to start going within and access the Mecca, which is your true Mecca, which is your higher self, your true north. So as we close out, it says in the 8th century AD, the Moors, natives of Mauritania, North Africa, that's America, invaded Spain, which is the western portion of America that was still under the jurisdiction. Because there was no Spain, remember, in, 49, in the 7th century. So that was wrong. And took it from them and took with them the Egyptian culture, which they had preserved knowledge in the ancient ways of the centralized, i.e., and belonged to the common parent system, which was the wisdom teaching of the ancient mysteries of Egypt all the way past the Greeks and everything else, because they were the Moors, i.e., the high priest of Anu. And such the people of North Africa and the neighbors of the Egyptians became the custodians of the Egyptian culture, which they spread through considerable portions of Africa, Asia, Minor, Europe, and during the occupation of Spain, the Moors displayed considerable blah, blah, blah. And that goes into Cordova, Toledo, Seville. You see how all of these places is here? Saragossa. So, boom. In addition, the Moors kept the constant contact with Mother Egypt, but they had established the caliphates in Baghdad and Cordova and had also established in Cairo, Egypt, and Europe, and all of that. All of those connections got wiped out by Abdul Aziz. There was more than one Abdul Aziz at the time that we're talking about. And the one I think they put in our Quran is, is the fake one. He's the whack one. Because he's the one that ordered that. All of the Moorish quarters and everything that existed in the ancient quarters of Egypt and Saudi Arabia and all that be demolished. Look it up. Here go George Bush at Dealey Plaza when Jackie O popped JFK in the backseat. He's in college at the time. So again, all of this is orchestrated. All of this is preordained. All of these niggas is related. All of them are the opposite of what they show themselves to be. And we are what we have always been, more. You know what I'm saying? So this guy, Abraham Lincoln, like I said, being one of the, the, the true upholders of the Moorish Empire and the preserver of the Moorish rights. This is why his his... His uh, running mate name was Hannibal Hamlin. And he looked just like him. This was the original government that existed up until 1871. All of the Moors that was running the government and had power in America was, was, was Moors, was black. 
because America was still Indian country. Look up what Indian country is. It don't mean Indians. It means all of the countries connected to the ancient treaties. So Indian country is the Maghreb al-Aqsa. Indian country is Morocco, according to the House Joint Resolution and the annexation of Texas of 1845. So everybody that's claiming themselves to be Indian is talking about the shit that happened after. And they are actually putting themselves under the Indian Citizenship Act of Andrew Jackson and later um, Woodrow Wilson, which then made them wars of the state and then merged them with the fake white Indians that basically kicked them out of the tribe and kept all the money. Ain't that what happened? So again, as we close, he says, my client from the case, Dugney, uh, when he won for William Dugney the Moore, he said, my client is not a Negro. Though it is a crime to be a Negro, it is no crime to be born with black skin. But my client is not a Negro, and his skin may not be as white as ours, but I say he is not a Negro, and though he may be a Moore. Mr. Lincoln interpreted Judge Davis scarcely able to uh, restrain his smile. You mean a Moore? Not Moore. Well, Your Honor, Moore, not C.H. Moore who happened to be the opposing attorney, replied Mr. Lincoln, and the sweep of his long hand toward the table where, Moore, where the Moore sat. He said, I say my client may be a Moore, but he is not a Negro. So this right here is Photoshop. All of these pictures they've been showing us of these people, all these reenactments, all of that's fake. Anything these people tell us about American history is fake, bro. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm convinced now. Is now coming up and seeing all of this and then looking at the Civil War the same way they staged wars today, they were staging wars back then. Don't think they wasn't. And I'm showing you exactly who they was and how this is now all tied up to why we have to be murdered in order for them to keep control. So when the police, we see the police kneeling with these guys, that's like you accepting a dress from your rapist. You don't do that. You don't let them do that. But again, as long as the so-called Blacks are divided, they're always going to be able to be infiltrated. And the Black Lives Matter movement, which was started by two feminist uh, so-called Black women, who are also, uh, I think, lesbians, basically accepted the money from this guy and now become the face for the LGBT movement to come in and rewrite the traditional norms of the black, so-called original family, who they call Black. The fact that they call it Black Lives Matter lets you know it's still a mind control op. And the sisters involved, just like the Me Too movement, have been used as dupes and are either willing supplicants to it now or down with it, which is basically both. Right. So here, this is from their own website. It says, we make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. We are self-reflexive -re and do the work required to dismantle this gender privilege and uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. We build the space that affirms black women and is free from sexist misogyny and environments which men are centered. We practice empathy, we engage comrade, comrades, communists with the intent to learn about and connect their context. You see this? We make our spaces family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts so that they can mother private and they participate. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. That's man, woman, child. You see, they're terrorists. Using black people as the as the face for it. Good black people too. You think they out there really working for that when these people are there to replace all the men. They want all the black men dead. And the sisters and stuff is helping them do it. Nat Turner was skinned, cooked, and eaten by white people. White people also boiled his body down into a fine liquid and drank his remains in an elixir called Nat's Grease. This is from the New York Times in 1860. Okay. Yes, we visited the county and got a tour when that Turner revolt happened and they even turned us into lampshades. 
This is where the picnics came from, where they picked the nigga and tortured us, hung us, and ate us. This is who is involved with the Black Lives Matter movement. This is who involved with the United States government. This is who involved in Freemasonry. This is who they want to, you, you to have your children taught by. This is who they want you to be cool with. This is what they want you to integrate into. You understand? So again, as we put a final coffin in this white man, he's calling himself the, the conquering lion in Judah, being that he was born on the, the shot, and he claims to be from the descendant. And all these dudes that's on the internet that's talking about, oh, Preston John, when you get these niggas talking about Preston John, them niggas is Jesuits. <laughs> Because Presta John was the last, one of the last so-called ancient uh, Roman Christian Ethiopian Sabaean king that was trying to usurp the caliphates that had wiped out all of the satanic shit they was doing. So them, them, them Ethiopian ones and Roman ones was practicing fucking polytheism and sacrifice and baby eating and all that. So the Presta John cults and all of that popped up after. And this is what led to the fall of Granada because all of these dudes consolidated together the same way you got the Boogaloo Boys today and the Proud Boys and all of these, these are all Jesuit back. It's the same demon. Just remember that. Ain't nothing changed. It's fate. So this is gonna put a coffin in this in this pretender. From a book, Ancient and Modern Britons, and Abel Wharton does not hesitate to express his dislike of his daughter's unsuitable boyfriend in racial terms. Lopez is a swarthy son of Judah. A Jew boy, and he is nasty. He is a nasty foreigner, probably of Jewish descent, and the Jews adventurer out of the gutter, right? He's a greasy black foreigner, right? Lopez is a black Portuguese nameless Jew. See, so the Prime Minister is a novel by Anthony Trollope, and his first published in 1876. In the fifth volume, Palace, a series of the novels. Big up to whoever created this meme. Uh, in this 1876 novel, the Jew is described as the swarthy son of Judah, the greasy black. Swarthy meaning black, meaning he was a Moor because he was Portuguese, which means, again, the royal family that this guy is claiming descent from cannot be that. He can't be that if he's not claiming that. And if he is that, he's going to have to reactivate all the titles that put us in play, okay? Because we're the real black side of the family that he came in to try to bleach out. Islam. Anybody else? Anyone else? Let me know. Not thank you guys for coming through. Let me just show you this real quick. Uh, So again, all these Hollywood people, all of this stuff is based on the Nazi system that started the Montauk Point was brought up here. Brought to Germany and brought back here in this new corporate form. So this again is King Charles. That means that this guy gotta say he descended from this dude. It's crazy. Here he go again. So he's saying he descended from him. This dude was also Charles. This Charles was also the Inca emperor. This the Charles that allowed us to be known as Spaniards and reestablish the Spanish empire as part of the old new reorganized Moorish empire. Okay. These are what the Romans look like that we was going up against. Except for him, Septimius Severus, he's the one that ushered in the new, the ushered in the dark ages, put the Moors back on top. Big up to him. Anybody else have any questions?
brother on Facebook knowledge itself had posted this a long time ago. Just so you know. I made a painting of this in my crib. Just lets you know what was good. Big up to him. All right. Just so you know who these people are when you see their pictures. Um, next week, we'll get into um, the origins of the type of Islam that we deal with, how we can show and prove that it actually comes from that. And we've always been persecuted because of that and its connection to the original more. So when they start talking all this crap to you about what you are, what you're not, and if you've got more evidence or reason not to even engage these people. Again, they date themselves when they keep talking about some lot of stuff. The Prophet said we ancient more, ancient more vites. So we at war with an ancient enemy. And no matter what face it has throughout time, we always identify it and shut it down. You know what I'm saying? So they can say what they want and do what they want. But in the end, as the prophet said, it all goes back to the Asiatic because it started with us. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't even exist naturally in the world. You know what I'm saying? Caucasians and, and these things we call whites and stuff, they don't exist naturally in they have to create a state of perpetual chaos to exist. Therefore, they're not natural, and they know it. They know it. There's a white girl online. I'll probably show it next week when we get into class. But just be in on that, on all of that. But she's a part of the Queen of Spades society that I told y'all about. That's trying to extinct white people, but low key keep them keep them here in the form of neutrinoid mulattoes through amalgamation. So you can pass all the secrets off to them. We're not going to do that. Exactly. That black, black bread thing. You understand? So when you see the white chicks and they got a they got a spade tattoo, watch out for them chicks. That's the new daughters of the American Revolution right there. That's auditioning to be the fake oracles of Adelphi to get you away from the original woman. To keep you in the, the perpetual pedagogy that they have. They don't fall for the banana and fail pipe. And again, we just exposed what happened with the thing. So unless anybody you know that's talking about it like this and that they're ready to do it, then again, this is the evidence that we, that anybody can use. So now when you start doing suits against the, the cops and stuff, you start doing it against the place where the original bonds is housed. So if it's in New York, you're going to do it in Arizona. You're going to file it in both places. So now they ain't got no way to flip it. This is also why after a pig do something, they move him to a different place because his bond is not being bought by a different, by a different precinct under a different state. So now he got to go serve there. The same way when somebody buys your bond in prison and move you from New York to to uh, Philadelphia or whatever, just they move the bonds. They move you the same way because they both in prison. So again. Start spreading the word about this BLM thing and get the people to separate from them. I thought I had the picture. Next week, I'll show the picture of Soros and the Nazi uniform. You know what I'm saying? We'll get into that too. But again, all of this is coming from the same place. And the devil ain't changed his head. It's just another head on the same line. So again, until they start talking about nationality, birthright, and heritage, it's all fake. Anybody wants to hit me up, hit me up at House of Bell at Hotmail.com. And um, thank you guys for the support, man. In Ruina, Eos, for all on Mars. Taconi, my loot lotus. Loco, but this is the Absatan. Facts, Edamor. 